Hey guys, I'm back. So I hope you haven't missed me too much. Uh, I have missed YouTube a bit. Uh, really, I haven't been able to post as as often as I wanted lately. But hopefully, I'll get back to doing my videos. So uh, mostly because now I have a brand new Void Linux setup. So I just reformatted my entire system. And uh, in case you're interested, so this is what the partitioning table looks like. So I have an SSD where I'm where I'm kind of mounting my root partition. And I also have a boot partition. This is oversized, by the way, don't pay attention to the two gigs. But uh, this is an SSD with my root partition. And this is a hard drive again, which has essentially all the data. So I reformat everything. I was actually doing a dual boot before. Now I decided to simply drop a dual boot in favor, in favor of having a void Linux only kind of, um, kind of distribution setup. So if you open up, if I open up my NeoFetch, um, again, pretty much the same thing, so I'm running Void Linux as always. I'm also using XFC, so as I usually do, together with i3. Notice that I have uh, the i3 stuff you know about so well. And uh, let me run this again. Um, that's pretty much it. So I have a desktop environment XFC. This is the team. I'll actually change that later. And uh, I'll most likely do a video where I show how to kind of change the theming as well as the icons for XFC. So for anyone who also uses my setup and they want to and who wants to customize their stuff. Um, my terminal is your XVT. Again, this is what you're seeing right now. Uh, terminal font is in Consolata. People ask me, uh, ask me this a lot. And the GPU stuff. So this information is very useful for those of you who say that I'm bloating my kind of my computer. Really, I have uh, less than half a gig most of the time uh, of RAM running whenever I'm on standby. There is a bit of consumption here because of my OBS running in the background, but otherwise uh, there essentially is not that much in terms of uh, memory usage because XFC itself is very lightweight and it's only the panel that I'm running. I'm not even running the full desktop with the window manager and stuff. So there you go. Um, I actually also changed to something. So the first of which is OBS. Uh, I'm actually going to put this here. So this is my OBS window in case you don't know what it is. So it's kind of a more professional looking tool, not only for screencasts, but also for streaming. So maybe one day I'll get around to, to make a live stream if I have enough people kind of watching me, we'll see how it goes. Um, but what's very nice is that um, essentially, I, I really like GUIs for some stuff. Now, some YouTubers would say that the uh, CLI is great at everything, but really I think that there are tools appropriate to streaming and doing videos and the graphical ones are by far best so instead of running a bash script uh, that launches ffmpeg i think i prefer to use something more professional something more graphical like obs for example if i want i can simply drag this around and you're going to see on the video that my face is actually shifting and going here so i can ch change a lot of stuff in real time and it's much easier to see what things will look uh, look like once you finish so let me bring that back and another interesting thing is that I kind of changed the way uh, in which I deal with services. So not all of them, but some of them. So you, most of you who know uh, my Emacs setup, you know that I have kind of an Emacs server running in the background. And then I press a button in order to bring the Emacs client forward. So this is an Emacs client window. Uh, it boots very fast because everything has already been done. So every package has already been loaded. But uh, I usually did that by using a run it service. But uh, since I'm using XFC, I actually found a little trick that you can use to start applications. And the trick is that you go to your settings and then you have the session and startups uh, section. And uh, this essentially lets you set up some auto start applications, which are, which are applications that launch whenever you log in, in fact. So you can uh, select several triggers, for example, on shutdown on restart. In my case, I'm going to start my service on login. And then whenever I log in, I have this Emacs server that begins. So it's simply the command that starts the server. Again, it's Emacs in daemon mode. And then I can set my dollar sign adder to be the Emacs client. So this is what I execute whenever I want to open the editor. And the reason I did this, uh, it's actually simpler in some cases, because what happened is that 
if I ran Emacs server as a actual run it service, it would actually be run as root. And then I would have to do some kind of crazy magic with change with uh, chpst and run it in order to kind of make it have the right uh, permissions and the right user. But the thing is that there are, were always some issues regarding permissions and also some issues regarding environment variables mostly. So in, at the end of the day, my, uh, my Emacs server uh, running from run it would actually do stuff that it was not really supposed to do and it was kind of unpredictable so really if I run it if I run it this way I'm actually sure that I'm running it as my user because it run it is run whenever I log in as my user and it's much easier to manage so I find that I may keep this I don't think it affects performance too much and even if it does it's most likely ne negligible so I'll go with that and I'm doing the same thing for Pulse Audio. I'll most likely do the same thing for MPD. So I don't want to run MPD as root or run it on a system-wide setup, as people call it. I want actually to run it on a per-user basis. So I think that for every kind of program that I run on a per-user basis, I'm going to do this, run them from XFC rather than making a, making a run it service. We'll see. So that's pretty much it for now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.